the Lord bless you in Jesus name the week beginning becomes for you a week of miracles signs and wonders in the name of Jesus everything you lay your hands to do will prosper the Lord will lift you above your enemies you will see his faithfulness at work in your life I call your week blessed in Jesus name we pray you lead me and guide me to the city up above you lead me and guide me to my place of destiny I know he leads me and he guides me to the city up above Lord you lead me and guide me to my place of destiny hallelujah 33 now therefore let pharaoh seek out a man he didn't know he was talking about himself desperate and wise and set him over the land of egypt let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up grain under the hand of pharaoh and let him keep food for the cities just john verse 39 this is where a man's breakthrough comes after 12 years of misery being transported into his destiny by people he did not like facing situations he did not know were orchestrating themselves for his lift in 39 and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown ye all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art immediately without prayer without fasting help me read verse 41 to read and thou shalt be over my house no interview no meeting with any council member kings did not make stupid decisions they met with their wise men but the king announced he vetoed it thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than you 41 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt five minutes ago a prisoner five minutes later the prime minister my god how can you explain this the people who shaved him say so we were shaving the prime minister the people who dressed him and imagine pharaoh who took him to the prison i mean potiphar now he had become lord imagine what potiphar's house wife would do hear me friends god is in the business of changing the lives and the stories of men and of families it does not cost him so much all you need is the man that requires what god has given you he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above your mother has a large poultry farm there is a major hotel that is being constructed one manifestation of destiny helpers at a recommendation they can begin to say madam begin to supply this hotel for as long as the hotel lives see friends every man i know who has been blessed in any area of life got to a point in his life where he was led by destiny helpers to enter fearful mind-blowing and irrecoverable parts of destiny let's look at jesus we call him the king of kings we call him the lord of lords but let's see all the people that play different parts in the life of jesus did you know the bible says i don't know if i should read it all right let's read it 
Luke 2. Let's hurry up. Because we are going to do some prayer this night. Hallelujah. Prayer this night. I shared it with the leaders on Sunday. God began to speak to me that a breakthrough anointing is coming upon the house in a very, very, very significant way. And we prayed in that light. Luke 2, verse 25. Luke 2, verse 25. This is the story of Jesus. Are you there? And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was a righteous and devoted man, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus. Hold on. Look up. This guy called Simeon. Hallelujah. The Bible says God told him he would not see death. His job was to wait until he prophesies into the life of Jesus before he would die. Are you seeing? We don't hear the names of all these people in scripture. But tonight I want to show you people who took the destiny of Jesus and passed the button for him to become our savior. Hallelujah. And then he prayed and prophesied. Let's look at verse 36. So one destiny helper we see in the life of Jesus. Simeon. Number 2. 36 now. And there was one Anna. Listen to how the Bible describes her. What does he call her? One Anna. Hold on. He said one Anna. And one Anna. There was one Anna. Hold on. But without that one Anna, there will be no Jesus. There will be no redemption of mankind. There was one Anna, a prophetess. The daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. He said, and she was of a great age and had lived with, with a husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years and the man died. So what was she doing with the remaining part of her life? Let's read on. And she was a widow about four score and four, 84 years. So for all that remaining time, 84 years, the Bible says, who departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer night and day. And she coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption of Israel. She was the woman who was praying that jesus be born are you seeing that there was a woman behind the scene a destiny helper praying and fasting at age 84 that jesus will, that that what has been prophesied let me tell you if there were no people to pray they would have killed jesus because the people would not be sensitive to angelic activities they would have killed him and there will not be redemption for mankind destiny helpers we don't honor them the Bible never talks about Simeon again. The Bible never talks about Anna again. Are you following me please? Destiny help us. At the death of Jesus, the Bible says, listen, that when Jesus had carried the cross, he had bled so much and the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. He carried the cross to the point that this was him and the place that would bring redemption for mankind but there was no more strength and what happened he fell at the point where he was falling one black man meandered that road called simon of cyrene are you following me now and they said simon come they did ask him whether he had eaten or not they did ask him where he was going they just said mr man pick up this cross what happened a destiny helper he carried the cross. Cruel men. No devil can resist your destiny helpers. If you, These were men who would not allow Jesus to drink water. But they allowed a man to carry his cross for him. And Simon helped Jesus. And so Jesus could regain some strength. The Bible says. That when Jesus died. There was another strange rich man. 
called Joseph of Arimathea. He had a virgin tongue because the prophets had been had prophesied that none of his bones will be broken and that he will be buried in a tomb that is virgin. So God had led one man to buy a grave. How can a man buy a tomb and keep it for his own death? He didn't even know why he bought it. Remember when Jesus wanted to come in the triumphant entry. The Bible says a man had tied a coat. He didn't tell us the man. He said go and tell the man the master had need. At once he released the coat. Are you seeing all the people that played parts? When you watch your Jesus of Nazareth. They silence those people. And so you don't even know. You just see Jesus. But without these people in his life. The Bible talked about the wise men once. Didn't tell us anything about them again. It talked about the shepherds. Didn't tell us anything about them again. Now Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says Joseph of Arimathea was an influential man. It was on account of his influence. So a rich man was required for the redemption of men. It was the rich man that used his influence and went and said give me the body of this man let me bury if not they would have left jesus to hang on the cross there are you listening to me now we don't follow up these stories very well and they took him to a virgin tomb and they laid him there look at all the people that played roles in the life of jesus christ moses another man the bible says when they were killing Hebrew children, you remember? His mother put him in a basket. The word Moses means to come out of a basket. The mother put him in a basket. And do you know that she put a Hebrew material in the basket and pushed him? How can a mother? That was a sign of desperation. She said, let me just push him. Oh God, guide him. Suddenly, the water started leading Moses to a place for no reason pharaoh's daughter just said i'm not taking my bath don't they have bathrooms here i will go to the stream this stream at the exact point where the baby was coming that was when she was bathing and the bible says she had the sound of a child she would have said go and kill him when she saw it she started laughing her father gives an instruction to kill people. The daughter is saving the major person who they were supposed to kill. Destiny help us. Look at the drama that happens in the spirit. Your father gives an instruction. It was really Moses they were looking for. But now Moses was in the house and they were killing other people. That was the deliverer. The mother, a Hebrew woman, she didn't have much. But do you know what happened? When they pushed Moses, the daughter got, and then the maid of the mother came and suggested, said, do you want a nanny? They said, of course. He went and brought Moses' mother to come and be a nanny for her own son, and they paid her for it. Destiny help us. I want you to see that this is no coincidence at all. No threat. Moses grew up, he ate well, he was nourished. No join this, no nonsense, because there was an assignment waiting for him. He was in perfect shape. Hallelujah. Have you been taking note of certain people? Many of us have been cheated because we have neglected these strange sets of people. We live in a generation where all we are looking for is men of God. Could it be that after the prophecy from the men of God, there are ordinary people? Some of you come for koinonia and you sit down close to the person who can suggest something to you that will change your life forever. Are you getting blessed? The Bible tells us that a man called Saul was persecuting Christians everywhere and having met with god with jesus christ on the road to damascus he said he should go to the house of who judas and stay there 
who is that judas we don't know he just said go and stay in his house destiny help us he stayed there three days and then they sent a man called ananias we heard about him once didn't hear about him again and ananias came and said brother saul jesus whom you saw sent me that i should lay my hands upon you that you should be filled with the holy spirit and receive your sight when that happened he went away the bible says a certain time came they met one prophet called agabus he came out from wherever we don't know a man called agabus all his daughters were prophets and he gave a prophecy hallelujah you read all through the bible and see several people ruth and naomi haven't lost her husband haven't lost everything the bible says that ruth told naomi say my god will be your god and my your god will be my god your people my people the bible says while this a man just came out from wherever called boaz and he told the people we don't know who those people are he said as you glean leave some of the food their names were not mentioned just leave some food so that she can go and take care brothers and sisters if you miss the ministry of destiny helpers in your life listen to me you may never arrive your destiny no matter what kind of prophecy is given unto you there are many women who will not get married because the person who will connect them with their life partner is not there someone can just tell you come comes with us hallelujah let's go for fellowship somewhere pastor um family stand up just go and stand there and god will orchestrate it in a way please sit down make yourself very comfortable hallelujah praise god now this lady sits down she has been praying for a life partner if you have not been praying about it you better start praying she has been praying oh god a godly man a man who loves and fears you and what happens we cannot even find a friend again who invited her and she sat down and while she sat down sam is worshiping now listen come sam sam gets up and sam is lifting his hands as we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory what happens while sam is moving left and right doing the business of the father suddenly sam finds out that he's been drawn to this room sam will move this way and sam will be drawn and then a preacher like me will say talk to your neighbor and says your time to be blessed and sam turns and says your time to be blessed and the holy ghost who said did you hear what you said <laughs> hallelujah a few years after they are happily married and when you ask them what happened they say someone that's what they say someone the someone may be in the congregation but may not even know that he or she was the person who made this happen are you listening to me destiny help us many people have missed out every time you are entering a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life make sure you begin to handle with utmost respect the people that begin to come around you because some of them may not even be christians somebody can just come drunk with beer it may even be your loved one and for the first time you will say something sensible in years you say ah you didn't go for fellowship this night 
Then you hiss and go back. And God will saw your address. As you are coming in, that's when God will step into your life in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Men who do not know these principles die as failures in life and wonder, oh God, why are you not changing my story? Hallelujah. This is very important. I have seen this happen in my life. When God showed me that this would be the venue, how it was going to happen, I knew. Listen, the next time you are trusting God for a breakthrough in your life, don't think he's just going to come by an angel flapping his wings and says, take. Men, men have been God's instrument of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something tonight? Am I challenging you? And then we met Prof. And Prof just came and spoke to the church once. Once. And they came till today. Since we started in March 2011. We have not had to pay one naira for this auditorium to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this same Zaria, destiny help us. It's not a big thing for it's not a big deal for many of you until the day you get into positions where you will require the help of men. Are you listening to me? Many of us have pushed our destiny helpers away. Either because they do not carry forms. That's the problem we have with people who segregate people. We are not the rich ones. We are the ones who our fathers are senators. What is your father, Captain? Leave this place. We are the ones who are intelligent. What's your CGP 1.5? Get out of here. Hallelujah. We are the ones who are smart. We attended Queen's College. Which church did you, which, which school did you attend? One school, they have even forgotten the name. Leave this place. We are the ones who went abroad. We spent six years abroad. Where have you gone out from? I've just been in my local government. I've not even gone out. Leave this place. When you begin to treat people that way, get set for a rude shock in life because your destiny helpers will never assume forms that will attract you to them you must have a discerning grace to look beyond them some of them may be visitors every time they come to your house you know they are coming to collect your father's money but maybe that day maybe that day that day it could be some gatekeepers in your house every time you look at them Adamu, Adamu, how are you? Say, well done, man. How are you? You are insulting the man. One day you look and say, sorry. I saw one application. There's one newspaper here. You say, let me see. And you just find out that they need exactly what you want. And it will change your life and your story forever. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I was told the story of a lady who had been trusting God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. And the day they called her for a job interview, in all sincerity, she did not have any money. The mom did not have money there. And it was her neighbor who was a gate man. She begged him. It took a lot of humility for her to beg him. Guy said, give me my money. I said, make sure you give me. And I think he gave her, was it 500 or 200? She transported herself, got that job. When she got the job, they were going to lodge her in a five-star hotel for one month first. Where they would take her. Are you listening to me? Gave her 0.8 million to be able to get a nice house. This is true life story. Hallelujah. All that lady, that lady bought a bike and came and gave the gate man. The gate man was resting. Little did he know his breakthrough was coming. She just gave him a bike. He left the work immediately. Immediately. Many of you in life, listen to me. This is a powerful message. Many of you in life have neglected certain people. You may stand and look at this brother and just say, Kai, 
I beg Jerry. Many of us relate with people only based on what we can get from them. You need to stop that demonic attitude. The day I don't need anything from you, you are not my friend again. The day necessity brings it, suddenly, ah, ah Pastor Femi, we need venue. You are his friend. If that is your attitude, you will miss out on many prophetic things. You can see someone, the person is wearing a shoe that is not very nice. Thank God for the 10,000 naira one your father bought for you. The person may not have what you have, but he has a, he knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can open the door that your family has. Every prayer point has a human being as the answer somewhere. Every prayer point. Every prayer point. I tell you, if you are praying for a job, that job is available somewhere and it is at a platter of gold. One note can change a man's destiny. Activating breakthroughs through the ministry of destiny help us. Could this be why some of us are where we are today? Could it be that that's why some of our family members are where we are? The gentleman that always comes to your father and your father says, don't tell him that I'm around. Could it be that that very day he came with a news that will set the family forever and the person will live and go forever? We are going to be praying. Hallelujah. We are going to be crying for a restoration of destiny helpers that we have allowed to slip to our hands. We are going to be praying for sensitivity. Many of you treat everybody bad. You treat people rude. You are hostile. You talk to people. You say, that's how I am. Because you feel you have your world met together. A day will come. You will find out that what you have, you don't have access to a king. And it is God that will connect you there. Hallelujah. Today, by the grace of God, many places where I go and minister, I don't know those who told them about me. They just said, we heard about you. Who were the people who popped? The Bible said it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. We do not know. I only will pray for those people in my secret place that God will bless and honor them. You may never know. Never know. Sometimes we just get seeds from people coming into the ministry account. We don't even know the people. Could it be that one destiny helper shared his testimony one day? Are you listening to me? See, I am convinced that it does not cost God a fortune to cause a major prophetic breakthrough in your family. I was told about a man who had been saving to buy some cars, you know, just a, a, a little car. And then one day when he was going to buy the car, God sent him to go and um, greet, you know, like their elder ones, like an uncle. So when he went to go and greet the uncle, he was sitting outside. These are true stories. He was sitting outside. And then a rich man came in to see the uncle. And then he told him, he said he should wash his car for him. And he started washing the car. Of course, he sounded insulting. But then that's a big man. He was washing the car. Then when he was washing the car, the uncle didn't see for hours they were gisting. He washed the car, cleaned it, and sat down. He was even getting angry. When they came out, the uncle was hostile to him. He said, why have you come to see me? Don't you see that I have meetings? The, the rich man asked him, he said, what is it? He said, I just came to tell you that I gathered some small money. I want to buy a car. And then the rich man asked, just jokingly. He said, what car? He said, go. The man laughed. He said, is that a car? He said, the next day, you should come and meet him in his office. I'm telling you, I lie not. He gave him a brand new Toyota the next day. See, let me tell you something. It's not everything that money can do. Learn this early enough. 
because many people brag with the monies of their parents my father is a senator my mother is a this there are many people who were healed in koinonia here we still do not know who brought them someone referred them on the road told them do this do that and they came and they got healed I made up my mind never to that's why i treat people with love and honor and respect you don't know who it could be a little girl like this my sister she may just look at you and pray a prayer for you and say god just asked me to touch your head and just touch your head and say bless you suddenly you see every door opening and you are like what in the world is going on hallelujah are you getting blessed sometimes god can lead you to a meeting you don't know the name of the ministry you don't know the name of the man of god you don't know the name of anybody you don't know the ushers that brought you all you know is that one word was declared you carried that word you went back most times you never get to see your destiny help us to tell them thank you there are only few times you get to meet them. Four things that define prophetic moments of breakthrough. Number one, the spirit of prayer. Grace to pray like never before. Number two, a heart to give. Suddenly there is a dissociation between you and whatever it is that you have. Number three, demonic confrontations that attempts to discourage you. Number four, they begin to come. Destiny help us. They come as phone calls. They come as friends. They come as enemies. They come as unprofitable situations. They come as hostile different things hallelujah i'll never forget someone who had an issue with his supervisor from a year student some years ago he had a very serious issue with the supervisor and the supervisor would not even look at him and somehow somehow people began to mediate another lecturer was mediating and when he finally got to called the guy in they began to talk after insulting him and shouting and doing every kind of thing he said where are you from and that was where a conversation started and they wouldn't end that conversation till after three hours that guy found out that there were certain opportunities he desired that that student had ways he knew his father could help out and so on and so forth it was actually a property the man the lecturer wanted to sell and then he got to find out that the boy's father was a real estate agent they exchanged numbers there and that man's life changed who have you been neglecting god is asking you a question don't look at your neighbor who have you been neglecting because they may not speak english like you because they may not they are not charismatic as you who have you been neglecting because they don't belong to your church or they don't come for koinonia or because they are not pentecostals huh because they are not filled with the holy ghost you know there's this rubbish association of religious things that go on we are the ones who pray we are the ones who fast we are the ones who we are the ones who know god God will always use the most unlikely means. Never forget this message. Could it be that your destiny helper is here in Koinonia, sitting close to you? Hallelujah. When my younger brother was very small, he drank paint one day took a cup of paint and drank it and he fell down there and fainted created commotion and everybody was just running helter skelter they took him to the hospital but that was an opportunity because people came to greet 
Hallelujah. And there were certain people my father wanted to see who would not respond to him. They came to greet my brother. And finally, some opportunities who was trusting God for came by. I'm teaching you wisdom tonight. Many of you will need to call your parents and tell them, you stop insulting everybody that comes. It doesn't matter what they have done. God can still use them to be the ladder for you to step into destiny. There are some of you here. There are people that you can never look eyeball to eyeball with. You swear I say till Jesus comes because of what you did to my mother, because of what you did to my father. They gave us one thirty thousand to share. My my young, my elder brother gave me two k. And when may God punish you for as long as I live, calm down. Do you know that one day a door can be opened? I pray every time and I tell God. There are destiny partners that are attached, destiny helpers attached to this ministry. There are destiny helpers attached to my life. There are destiny helpers attached to your life. Once again, let me use this last example and we'll pray. Two people, one stand here, one stand here. Anybody? You, my brother? Just stand there. Never forget this. The distance between you and your breakthrough is not as far as you see. I don't care what it is. Hear me. The distance between you it could be a carryover cause you are praying and saying oh God but they can wave this thing. And you have done everything you know to do. One day, God can just send someone and they'll be discussing about you in the office and they'll say, please help this person. He has tried. The distance between you is a destiny helper. And I'm telling you, it can be seconds away. It can be minutes away. Only learn to recognize destiny helpers. They will come in forms that you will not appreciate them. After the grace here, there are people who come and just look. There are some people who just send me text messages. With one scripture. Jokingly, they did not even know. I don't know them, I don't have their numbers. But that one scripture just gives an insight to something God has been attempting to communicate to me. Destiny help us. We are going to cry unto God. Are you ready to pray? Bless you. Rise up on your feet. Say the distance between me. Say it as loud as you can. The distance between me and my breakthrough is a helper away. Say the distance between my family and their breakthrough is a helper away. Prayer point number one, you are going to cry unto God and say, Lord, I, I repent of people I have neglected. I, I want you to really pray and say, people I have kicked out of my life. Destiny helpers that would have taken me to a glorious level in my life by now. Lift your voice and pray. Kapo shatala kapanarara. Kamprata katala kotosia. People who would have given me relevant information. Those who would have connected me with helpers. Lift your voice and pray. Some of our family members are struggling aimlessly because there are people who can help. Wine pressers, bakers, men who can take you to the king. It's not as hard as it seems. I am convinced it's a destiny help by way. No matter what you need, financial breakthrough, a miracle, a prophetic word, direction in your life. Say, Lord, I repent. 
for neglecting destiny help us I've let them come and pass I refuse to activate the finding moments in my life pray on behalf of your family say Lord for my father for my mother for my brothers they would have gotten jobs by now they would have built houses by now they would have gotten contracts by now doors would have opened that terminal disease would have left by now my family would have been together by now but for the neglect of destiny help us hallelujah prayer point number two and i want you to pray this with all your heart he said i will restore to you you're going to pray and say lord let that cycle come back again in my life let that cycle i missed as a result of carelessness or pride or arrogance or insensitivity lift your voice say lord let the helpers come again lord let financial helpers come lord let marital helpers come lift your voice and pray lord let academic helpers come the distance between you and your breakthrough is your wine presser, is your wine baker. It's not hard. Is there anything too hard for God to do? I'm telling you, in one day, God can change your story. In one day, God can change the story of your family members. Restore. Pray, restore for my family. Restore, oh God, opportunities that have been lost. Opportunities, send them again, oh God. Help us of destiny. Send them again. Reactivate breakthrough. Reactivate breakthrough. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a little story. I have a friend. Listen to me. I have a friend in Abuja. This guy went to Abuja, a poor, broke person with nothing but his faith. Hallelujah. And this guy had been praying and said, Lord, change my story. Help me. This guy was crying praying people told him and you said stupid boy you got up and came to abuja no house no car no nothing this guy was praying and one day it always happens one day you don't even know that's why you must be prepared he was just sitting down and a friend called him he said where are you he said come quick this guy just ran and he entered the room and he saw a big man and some people were talking and he said, I wanted to involve you because God asked me to bless you. <laughs> and he sat down and the rich man was going to buy a plot of, a, buy some plots of land. 720 million. 720 million. And 10% goes to the agent. So they brought him. This guy became a millionaire overnight. He didn't do anything. They just brought him and counted the number of people. The 10% agency fee was what changed his life. Yet, there are many tongue-talking estate agents who have been in Abuja since 1990, since 1999, praying and running with complimentary cards. This guy was wearing palms. He wasn't wearing a suit. Palms! And his life changed overnight brothers and sisters if you ever forget anything this night remember that your prayer request is in the hands of a man it takes God who is the father of spirits to connect the lines 
and that's going to be our next prayer point you're going to say lord by the instrument of the prophetic i call forth they that have been destined to take me to the next level to take my family make sure you are praying Lord, prophetically, pray. Those who will open doors of jobs, doors of marriages, doors of ministry, doors of anointings, doors of favor, doors of lifting, doors of success, doors of increase doors of breakthrough make sure you are praying pray it with all your heart your family story can change you have been praying and fasting could this be the message could this be the message pray say lord whether in lagos or abuja or kano or Zamfara, the united states the caribbean by the prophetic power of the spirit let there be a connection orchestrate a meeting let there be a meeting pray pray god wants to take you from this level to another it's a year of supernatural exploits exploits by the spirit your story can change Activate defining moments. Activate breakthrough in your life. Come on, prophesy. I call them. They are coming into my life from the north, the east, the south. I pray for E and I. Destiny helpers are coming. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. Hallelujah. Let me give you one little story. Look at me. When Professor Madi was the Vice Chancellor of Amadou Bello University, many of you did not meet him. There was a gentleman who did very well, but he did not get admission hallelujah and the guy just went for reasons he could not explain he went and sat down near the senate in the night and professor madi had the culture of walking into students hostels walking around just to see what is going on and when he walked he saw the gentleman and he called him he said why are you sitting down here he said sir look at my wire result look at everything but my catchment area is not there and they didn't give me admission he said you are such a brilliant boy do you know what he told him he said go home and pack your load and come back when he came back they had printed his, admi his admission letter this is true it's a confirmed story hallelujah i know about a student who had been victimized for years till he was in 300 level whatever it is that happened either his name or his matriculation number clashed and what this guy was seeing was not his real cgpa this guy would work so hard but when the exams come out he will not be it and then one day someone just came in and for whatever reason the person decided to start cross-checking things the next thing they put on the notice board that they wanted to see him when they called him they said he should go and bring his results and his courses that he registered do you know true life story when they, this guy was at, at maybe around 1.7 something by the time they corrected everything he was supposed to be in 2 1 in all sincerity my cousin my cousin was a student in this school my cousin was a student in this school he wrote a major exam that he got a and when the result came out they gave him f this guy they didn't know he knew that he had he had read but you see sometimes 
even when you have the evidence you don't have access to the king there are many of us that have evidences that would wipe our night time but that access to the king hallelujah and one day God raised a visiting prophet who just came and he just complained and showed him everything. The man took on the case by himself until they rectified it. Look at me for a moment. What do you expect God to do in your life and in your family? It's in the hands of someone. It's in the hands of someone. That breakthrough is in the hands of someone. A house to complete for your loved ones to go to school let me tell you no matter what it is expand your mind tonight there are men who are carriers of miracles they don't even know there are some of you that your loved ones need some jobs they have been suffering you know that they want to change where they are working or they don't even have a job they are prayed they are applying CV after CV if it is destiny help us they will accelerate your path you will jump protocols we are going to pray say lord i receive discernment to see these people when they come into my life lift up your voice and pray it takes discernment it takes discernment it takes discernment. Say, Lord, let me discern. They may not be my tribe. They may not be my friends. They may be the enemies of our family. But Lord, grace to discern. When you are about to use them to change our story. Hallelujah. Final prayer point. Now you're going to pray and speak over your life and tell yourself you are breaking through and breaking forth on the left and right. Don't keep quiet, please. Don't keep quiet. Prophesy. I break through from the left, the right, the east, the west. Oh, hallelujah. I activate breakthroughs. I establish it in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of prayer, I contend against every power of darkness. Come on, pray. Pray against every satanic force. Pray against every power of darkness that wants to attempt to abort your breakthrough god wants you to smile god wants you to smile god wants you to smile he wants to encourage you he wants your life to be fruitful satan get lost be lifted all he gets let the family of Koinonia receive breakthroughs. I prophesy breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. Family breakthrough. Academic breakthrough. Spiritual breakthrough. Breakthrough in your job. Let your family members smile. I provoke it from the realm of the spirit. I provoke it from the heavens. I activate the angelic. I activate the angelic. Let angels begin to move to every family. Let angels begin to move over your academic. Angels move over your finances angels move over your family angels move i activate the operation of angels contend with the powers in the heavens 
and release breakthroughs for God's people. Let the angelic contend with the powers that delay, that stop people from entering their prophetic breakthrough. I release breakthroughs. I release breakthroughs. I release breakthrough. I speak it in your life. I send an anointing into your life. A breaker anointing. A breakthrough anointing. I send it into your life. I send it into your academics. I send it into your family. I send it into your finances. Those you do not know. I cause them to arise and help you. I cause them to arise and help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. Everywhere your gift is needed, I command them to begin to talk about you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I activate breakthrough for you. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere your gift is needed, whoever needs your gift in Nigeria, I stand as a servant of God. I command a connection in the realm of the spirit beginning from tonight. Tonight, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for everyone of your family members looking for a job. My God and my King tonight. Let testimonies rise from this message. No matter how long, tonight, let someone talk to somebody. Talk to somebody and talk to somebody and connect them for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. For your family members, I command, help us, those who will connect them to projects and contracts and opportunities. Yes, they don't merit it, but by the power of destiny, help us. I connect them to the breakthrough for the next level. In the name of Jesus. Where you have cried academically, I connect you to help us. Professors who will help you. Admin staffs who will help you. Admin staff who will help you. Members in the Senate who will help you. Whether for accommodation, whether for your resort, whether for missing script, whether for your wayek, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus. As the Senate and the faculty board members meet over your results and your performance may a strange man enter that meeting and advocate for you in the name of jesus anywhere they want to turn down your family members or turn down anything let a strange man come we don't want to know the name let a strange call come let a strange connection come I prophesy it. I release it to you in the name of Jesus. I release testimonies, testimonies, testimonies from this breakthrough experience. Beginning from tonight, I command calls from destiny help us. Calls from destiny help us. Calls from destiny help us. Connections with destiny help us. They will travel and come and meet you. You will meet them on the street. They will come to your homes in the name of Jesus. You will see them in your dreams. God will connect you. For every one of your family members that is supposed to be married and they are not married, the husbands or the wives, they are not in space. They are here on earth. Lord, we pray tonight as a family by the power that is in the name of the resurrected Christ. I pray, let help us lead partners to their mates in the name of Jesus. 
Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We command supernatural marital connections in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We bind every devil. We bind every power that attempts to cause delay. We set them free from every curse and every yoke of bondage. Be released in the name of Jesus. Ministry of Destiny help us. All through this week, I want you to pray. Cry out and say, Lord, bring them. I believe you will hear fearful testimonies in this place as a result. Tonight, I've shown you a very mighty secret. Don't forget it too soon. Hold it. Every time you are praying over something, the answer is in the hands of another person. Stop beating about the bush. Every man and every authority can answer when God calls. Yours is just to pray that God will connect you. Hallelujah.